Hey Hermes, this is the highlights from Agora TV episode 2, recorded live on the 1st of October in the Olympus Dow Discord. In this episode, we talk with Church. He's the mimetic chief over at Odyssey Dow, which is the arts and culture sub Dow of Olympus. And we talk about the mimetic power of money, the power of Dows versus regular human enterprises, and lots more along the way. I really enjoyed talking to Church, and I'm so proud to have him as part of the Olympus community. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. I wanted to talk to you as kind of the the mimetic chief at Olympus, our resident sort of mimetic thinker, about whether or not you think uh, after the Olympus Pro launch that people are starting to sort of see Olympus differently, and whether or not you think that sort of as the idea of Olympus is sort of propagated throughout crypto and like the wider investor base, whether or not that's that people people are going to start seeing us less as a sort of reserve backed unpegged coin with backing behind it to more of a sort of movement and protocol that can coordinate a massive amount of people that are all aligned in a certain way um, to achieve a certain outcome. I mean, that's a set of beliefs and, 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 and concepts. And there's a lot, a lot of series of understanding in, in, in what you said. You're coming from a, from a framework where you've seen quite, quite a lot of the history and, and, and how you've referenced most of what you're talking about there is only really accessible as a series of perspectives over that history. So I think part of how to, to frame and answer your question is, is, is look at how, how are new people coming to the space going to interpret the memes? in light of not having that history now. How are, as people get their new exposure, kind of like um, GC coming up before, in terms of what is what is their take on it and how do they perceive the space? So I think a strength for Olympus there is, again, the, um, the level of community and, and engagement. The the difficulty may be perhaps as, as you translate from something that is this uh, large cultural sort of brotherhood hype to something that has... Actually, some really, really interesting and, and pretty defined use cases with OP and and some of the things that are starting to come out is how do we how do we translate it from something that that people recognise that it's this large um, currency game with 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 OM and staking OM and sort of the Ponzi nomics aspects there to realising that now it's actually gotten to a point where it's like the Ponzi game has run long enough that it it's become stable with the amount of liquidity that's owned by Olympus that as you're saying these these interactions can happen where you know alchemics owns some of the liquidity and then and, and there's, there's trades happening on a on a treasure protocol layer and the ability to do that further being you know alchemist or or other projects is is going to allow this base currency network to spread in terms of mimetic propagation then then i think this is where pretty much in any mimetic network is you see uh the diminishment of propagation beyond the initial environment discord and and where we're at allows for a certain rate of communication and a certain rate of propagation of these memes and these ideas. And a lot of the people in the space in Olympus are either crypto savvy or coming into the space because it's very, very kind early on. As it becomes a more mainstream adoption thing, it then becomes, well, are those memes going to make sense to someone who doesn't grow up with Discord, grow up with the internet, have some crypto knowledge, uh, or is seeking to become exposed to that knowledge in a, a friendly, open way? Yeah, how am I tracking? Does that answer some of your question there? Sorry, I think we're on the right, the right track. I think, um, Church, I wanted to get your kind of view on Olympus Pro and kind of taking that three point three percent fee that Olympus does, and then Olympus has this sort of social contract where it's saying, "Well, you give us that fee, but it's not really a cost because we're never going to sell it." What effect do you think that will have on sort of our community? in in relation to being more well disposed to that protocol but also that protocol's community knowing that we have some of their token in the, our treasury and it might end up being quite a bit oh it definitely helps the communities building alignment because this is this one of the hardest things is that we're in an we're in an environment where like comparatively if 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 I, if I was running an ai firm and i if i go around talking bullshit um, and hype, then that doesn't serve 
my reputation in the space as an AI thought leader. Whereas in crypto, a lot of projects can actually benefit from the generation of simply just having hype and inaccurate claims or, or unclear claims, shall we say, because as so long as people are buying, you win. And now that's, that's not what Aquas does. That's not what Olympus does. It's, it's not how a lot of the projects that we all interact with are actually operating. We're, we're, we're pretty clear about our marketing and, and how we do things, but tracking back to your question, I think, yeah, I think that's was... something that allows, I was going to say, coming back to it is, 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 is that alignment building is, is because you've then got, got token in both places. It's, it's no longer about whose hype are we, whose hype are we engaging with or diminishing? Who, who's the loyal follower? It becomes a lot more where it's like, oh, well, like not betting fiat in the audience is, is it's hopeful that you're holding both tokens, that you've been aware of both things for, for quite some time and people being able to navigate the various benefits of different protocols and, and have those interact with each other is, is, is quite powerful. I think having a distributed network is, 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 is where we're going to go is it's, it's not just the strength of Olympus, then it's the strength of these various protocols and the, the different insights that they have and how they run things. But combining those under one protocol in that sense is, is, is powerful. I don't think a 3.3% fee in the sense is as, as the, the truth of that diamond hand approach is demonstrated. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem because protocols can check it. Protocols will be able to see it and other projects will liken to going, oh, hang on a minute. If we, if we do do this trade with Ohm, it's a pretty clear use case. So I've seen this sort of from Fiscantes and Zeus, this sort of, um, idea that the real value in crypto is attention and if your protocol has attention then people are going to like think about it and then want to buy it um and then that's kind of one of the really powerful things olympus has and um obviously anyone could go and fork our bonding contracts and not take 3.3 percent but it seems to me that the value is in sort of having the attention of sort of all these omis um, on that bond market and they can see your protocol and they'll sort of investigate it, see if they want to buy a bond. Do you think this is type of, this sort of mass coordination by a protocol is going to be successful as we scale more or maybe just your thoughts on this sort of coordination of attention as a sort of new primitive in DeFi? 100%. I mean, uh, markets are... Uh, an approximation of attention already and, and crypto markets and the pace of them have allowed us to see just how readily that happens. Um, the GME hype earlier, earlier in the season sort of gave it a case of, well, it, it, it really doesn't matter what an underlying stock's value is if, if you can coordinate people around it. And this is where, you know, my, I've, I've, I've been thinking and working on various cases and understanding of the, the neurobiological underpinnings of mimetic propagation and, and, and trying to, to work on that theory for, I think, eight to 10 years it started in my philosophy undergraduate. But it was only really when it came into full swing in the crypto market is that it highlights that mimetic fitness, mimetic uh, propagation, mimetic coordination becomes something that's, that's really, really key. Is It's a question that keeps coming back to my mind is, is how do you coordinate 3,000 people to do the same action at the same time? It's really, really hard unless you've got everyone sort of in groups and organized and, and committed to something. So you can have that happen as a function of belief is that everyone believes the same thing. So they're going to do the same thing. Or you can have it happen as a matter of mimetic coordination is that over time in this decentralized distributed sense, memes propagate, people recognize salient things and then engage with it. And I think Olympus does that really, really well in terms of how attention is, is factored. That's, that's why, Viscantes and others come back to it is because it's um, mimetic propagation is you can't propagate a meme without having attention. You can't garner attention without having a meme that saliently lodges itself in someone's mind. Otherwise, what I'm saying mm. doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, what I'm saying doesn't carry. And that's, that's the whole core of the theory is, is having something that is quick enough to go, oh, hang on, I recognize that thing and it means something to me. Yeah, that's that's a, such an interesting take. I've got a interesting question for you, Church. Do you think the Olympus incentives themselves is what has created such a strong community? Talking about like the power of group coordination and how humans just inherently 
are group oriented species um and we really thrive when we're you know incentives are aligned do you think the incentives themselves are what has created this community um not wholeheartedly no i mean my 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 perspective as, as a behavioral scientist i guess is is that it's people you always bet on people in any project space endeavor and what you're going on i don't i don't think olympus would would have come out exactly the right way with the same incentives if you didn't have the same people here in the audience here in the here in the dow and and having contributed along the way and that's kind of where like letting things evolve in part is is, is a strength um which is, is sort of something we tap into over at alchemist as, 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 as having no clear roadmap but but to come back to olympus yeah no i don't think if you know if we if we didn't have brian figuring out mad nine nine strategies do you think people would have the the same approach to certain aspects of olympus do you think if you have jaws being jaws we olympus wouldn't be the same like this intercultural meme within the community itself is partly what maintains the structure of Olympus being culturally and mimetically what it is. So it's, it, it really comes back to people. So I don't think it's just incentives, but on the incentive side of things, I think the fact that Olympus has, at least on some levels, a really easy to understand and interact with use case. All you do is buy the token and stake it. For a lot of people, that's enough. You don't need to engage in bond strategies and so on. Just simply getting something that rebases and then you can take the rebases off the top provides a really simple loop, loop for people to go hang on a minute if i do this properly and manage my income i can actually turn this into an income and i think that really appeals to a lot of people i think a lot of people especially especially less sort of crypto veteran types are coming into the space going i don't necessarily want to day trade i don't necessarily expect to be able to make you know 100x in a month or something ludicrous like that but they're actually looking for a use case where they can go hang on a minute if i drop 20 30 100k savings into this is it going to generate me steady rewards and a lot of staking pools that involve lock up and all that sort of stuff become too complicated for a lot of people who aren't familiar in the space i feel so that ease of use is a very low barrier of position coupled with the the, the style of community that we've got at all of us is that you know everyone's an omi instantly you join the brotherhood by rocking up so yeah that's a that's a that's a great take it's kind of the new and... hodl right <laughs> or not the new but yeah, exactly. it's kind of a new hodl like all you have to do is hold and we and then olympus says all you have to do is stake and then you're fully part of the community you're like three three you're an omi and that's all you have to do and then you can do these extra things if you're you know curious or interested oh it's 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 really interesting that you put it that way with the the the, hot, the new huddle because it's as you said it's not a new huddle in the sense that it's still the same action again of huddling but previous huddling with like the bitcoin and ether sense was you know a very very passive huddle in terms of just don't 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 touch it don't do anything with it you're not trying to make anything happen with it holding it itself as a spread unity everyone if everyone holds price go up okay cool Whereas in this sense, it's an active passivity in the, the, not just if everyone holds price goes up, it's by everyone holding price continues to go up. There's an active mechanism in the space, which I think is what you're trying to, to point towards Mark, when you sort of talk as this is like a better Bitcoin as a mechanism, because not only do you just huddle, but you sort of huddle actively. It's good to point that out. One thing that I thought about recently, I think someone had brought it up during FOMO 3, but it was this kind of the thesis uh, surrounding Olympus has been very much a, you know, a reserve asset from the beginning, whereas um, um, Bitcoin in its early uh, stages was very payments focused and now is trying to flip the thesis, um, whereas I feel like the thesis structure for Olympus is really sound. So the, you know, for it to move into, you know, potentially being something like payments in a very long-term horizon like that, I think that thesis flipping is very tricky, um, especially as any system grows. Um, so I was wondering what your kind of like thoughts were there, Church. And do you kind of see that as being like really strong? Yeah, that being, that being very um, bullish for Ohm in general, purely because the thesis from the beginning has been so so strong i think it comes back to what 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 what, what is money really 
which is a lot of the sort of core discussion behind cryptocurrencies and so on is like we talk about value creation and what it means for any token to have value at all you know i could i could walk out tomorrow and create a new erc20 but does it have value and and that's partly you know liquidity and, and culture and utility and getting things going but i think it comes back to how do people use money and and what is the the benefit of having it or what are you trying to get out of money and i think the way that Olympus approaches it is then, again, it, it comes back to this really easy use case of I can use my money to make money in a way where it's not difficult to do and it makes sense. So patience, virtue is is rewarded in, in terms of doing it in a very simple, just collective way of, of approaching it. In terms of how then people engage with that as an asset, well, what do you want money for? You you, you use money in a way where you're, you're able to spend it on things and engage with it, obviously. So having a currency that grows over that time, in a sense, is as much as it's not oriented on the the payment security and, and all that sort of stuff, is it actually surfaces most people's goals and desires for a financial system at a base layer. Like we talk about UBI and, and, and sort of universal basic income for, for individuals just to be able to exist and, and, and do things and take the time to, to work through their stuff and then self-activate. And, and I'm a big fan of that approach. And, and I think Olympus and... Alchemist and various other projects in the space are, are starting to offer this to people is you could, because, you know, you don't need to make a million dollars to to be happy with your life. You could be staking and just making a couple hundred dollars of home a week. And that's, that's life changing for some people around the world. So in terms of how people can actually engage with and use their money, like don't get me wrong, Bitcoin's fantastic. But if I have to wait for a fundamental market shift, before I made any profit or done anything with it, then that might be the make or break in terms of, oh crap, I actually have to sell my Bitcoin because I have to pay my rent this week in, in certain cases for people. So that doesn't let you grow your asset set as an intrinsic coddle. That's what I meant by the active versus passive difference is as I'm reliant on the market with Bitcoin, whereas with OWN as a currency, I can grow it and use it in various ways. And I think it's the utility of, being able to act, interact with a currency in an easy way that invites and incentivizes people into own. Because, you know, you can use it to do stuff. It's, it's, it's really easy to interact with that way. I think then that's in contrast to perhaps some of the utility that other projects build, as well as sort of what we got over with Alchemist, is it's not easy to take your mist off the top with the Crucible. But that's part of the intrinsic long-term bid in that you, you, we're building a longer ecosystem we're not so much trying to build a base reserve currency but rather a suite of utility so this is where you can see natural crossovers between various aspects do you think um the bitcoin miners is a sort of as this third player who has really no interest in coordinating with sort of the people uh activating the hodl meme is kind of is it, it's, it's kind of something that people sometimes aren't aware of, but when they become aware of it and the fact that these miners have these costs, um, do you think that kind of breaks the hodl meme a bit? Whereas Olympus, we don't have this kind of third player who's we have to coordinate with. And obviously we can't coordinate with miners if we're holding Bitcoin because we don't know what their motivations are and they're not part of the meme. It becomes a it becomes another force in the market is is that oh yeah shit there's a large proportion of miners that might choose to coordinate a dump or or do things at at, at various stages and I mean it, it's kind of similar with these how you've got miners versus developers and and different pushbacks of forces in the system there I don't think it necessarily like breaks the huddle for people it just makes them need to be aware of of how long term a Bitcoin huddle, huddle might be. I think people, once they understand the costs of mining and, and sort of how intensive that can be, uh, do do appreciate like that, you know, miners, miners got to eat too. And it sort of comes back to that distinction of passive versus active holding. Um, if you're actively trying to make an income off, off Bitcoin as an ecosystem, then you do need to be selling it to make money, which the which makes sense from a, a, a rational sort of economic perspective of the miner because they're expending resources elsewhere to actually generate resources in Bitcoin. So they have an intake of Bitcoin, so it makes sense to sell them. I think people reason mostly from their personal sort of perspective and what they want to happen for their individual circumstance. They're not too worried about what other people are doing 
So it only really relates if they want to, you know, if they're feeling FUD and, and, and our Bitcoin's down and bloody miners and stuff. And whether that's true or not, um, I don't think it actually interacts with the meme too deeply. But coming to Olympus is is then because you don't have that active force in the market that, you know, a mining party is going to, you know, be able to coordinate or drop their prices, the alignments of all the participants in the network is 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 much more closely in sync with each other. So it's only if widespread everyone in Ohm or Olympus suddenly was, oh, I don't want this anymore. It, it doesn't make any sense that would people drop out and completely stop playing the the passive active game. Do you think this changes when there's super cheap borrowing? So say, you know, some protocol says, oh, there's lots of money to be made on Olympus. We're just going to have these sort of, you know, fixed term loans at 5% um, because Ohm is going to maintain its price and we'll sort of give them that good rate. And then kind of you can have your money and your Ohm at the same time. I feel like, you know, the rates at the moment on Rari are like, I don't know, 40 or 50%. We're like carrying <laughs> sort of some of these dollar protocols like Inverse has got money in there, Fay, um, Frax, they're all sort of just drawing all this cash flow. But if, say, there's sort of, I mean, MIM charges a 1% fee and 5% interest, but say there's some protocol that says, all oh, right, well, we'll just give you 5% interest and you can just come and get a loan from us. And then people could like take that money and go out into the world and sort of, you know, buy a house and have their money and eat it too. Do you think that would be a sort of massive unlock? And how do you think people would start to think about it like their wealth, I suppose, which is something you can do with Bitcoin now, right? You can go get wrapped Bitcoin and borrow against it for like 5% or 4% on compound. Yeah, I think that would be a really interesting use case. Um... This is this this thoughts along these lines are actually my entry to, to crypto years ago, learning about ETH and so on is is I think whether sort of coming into my own accord or just loosely starting to pick up some of the crypto discussion back then by means of introduction, I started thinking about negative money and what a negative money system would look like in terms of reverse incomes and and rather than having a situation where you owe the the community something. It was more that the, through transaction and trade, the, the community owed you something. So you could start from a base level where you didn't really require any money to get going, which I think then kind of comes back to what you're saying with the, the loan mechanism is, is you can imagine someone going, having very little collateral and then leveraging that up several times, knowing that OM is stable, going to hold its price and give you a, a much better return and progressively pay off that collateral to then have legitimate assets sort of out of thin air. Taking that further is if, if, if we had, I think if we had a wide enough distributed system, then it becomes a not so much um, can you get money? And this is where it sort of becomes a negative, a negative money system is, is, is you've got a like ETH or various tokens with a deflationary base is, is it's more that there's, there's going to be more money around over time. It's just then how much access and how much value can you generate with that to elevate yourself in that system? So I think this is really, really powerful is because it allows for a selection mechanism that if I want to have, you know, if I want to save up to 60 grand of ohm and then live out the rest of my life on the rebase, I can. But then the impact I have from selling my rebase all the time is going to be less and less and less compared to someone who's going, no, I'm, I'm looking to build my assets and I want to, I want to live on, on, you know, the, the rebase of 120 ohm a year and, and so on or, or so forth. So it gives people this optionality to select to the level of commitment that they want, which I think is really, really powerful. Once you factor in loans for that, is it sort of, it's only limited by someone's vision in terms of how far they can utilize that, I think. And um, I guess it changes, right? Because once you, <laughs> a big thing for me was, well, actually, I think like US dollars are going to become more and more worthless uh, over time and eventually it'll get to a stage where people have to just stop thinking about money in terms of US dollars and they might attach value to something else. Like some people say, oh, I think in Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but it's so volatile. That's kind of ridiculous to think. But the hope is that Ohm eventually gets to that stage where it sort of is maintaining its value. But 
um, if the US government keeps on printing like tons of money, isn't that, is, I mean, then there will have to be sort of this inflation um, and then you'll be borrowing money and paying like a certain percent to borrow it, but that should go down over time as there's more and more US dollars come on into DeFi. Um, and then what do you think happens there, Church? I mean, from a like sort of mimetic view, like do you think people just start seeing um, like a, and it might not be ohm right there might be some better product that comes along i doubt it but or people adopt bitcoin as a sort of standard but um do you think how hard is it for people to stop thinking about sort of fiat as money i suppose is the question i think it depends on like people's heuristics and how how they've been culturally programmed how open they are to new experiences and new ideas i guess yesterday i, I tried to convey to a friend um in australia she's got a lot of savings um i'm like you should you should probably start looking at some crypto even even just staking some of your your stuff in ohm or alchemist and explaining what i'm involved in and going on and she's just like oh it seems so risky and it's sort of i don't think it's so much that people have a full understanding of currency and sort of wealth of nations history anyway it's like what we're attempting to do now with cryptocurrencies is is relearn a lot of the lessons that we knew as sort of the state of nations and and and, and, and gov early government bodies is that you you did need some inflationary mechanism you did need direct control over your um economy base it couldn't be something that was was backed by the fed or gold or or what have you it was more a matter of utility so i think as people realize that there's actually no difference in the mimetic structure between these two things the whole the whole idea of a dude in a suit with spreadsheets and graphs having the ultimate truth of what the markets are going to do is 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 a mimetic dream that we've been sort of captured by for the last 20 30 40 years is that that's how the markets work and they know what they're on about i think as we as we move into this sort of more digital remote age a lot of those sorts of memes break down because you can't have that confidence play in person. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter how you're doing things on Discord. So as this filters through, we've got a situation where people's approach to currency is going to be a lot more open. It's not going to be dependent on what a trusted authority thinks. As crypto becomes a mainstay, people are curious. The more they hear that conversation, the more they're going to break down that barrier of imposition. So again, I think it's less about how people perceive cryptocurrency directly, but the barriers to understanding it, as well as people understanding deep sort of economic value and how value is created in the first place. You know, this is kind of my passion for mimetic propagation is understanding like, well, how do you get people to understand that this is this is something different, that currency mm. itself and and getting that happening is, is, is important. One of the omis in the Agora chat just brought up, you know, living through the end of a monetary era is kind of scary. Um, I, tend to, I, I tend to share the same view on things. Um, you know, every, you know, we might be people that are involved within crypto, you know, early adopters may be well off because they've taken the risk and it, they may be rewarded. But for, for those that exist in the regular financial system, um you know that that is kind of worrisome so you know that in in that context um what 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 can we do to kind of help people jump through those psychological barriers about crypto being risky and and all these things that aren't necessarily 100 percent truths it, it it's the same with anything it's it's widespread education and, and normalizing you, you need people to get past that it's one it's okay to be daunted by this space there is a lot of technical knowledge to wrap your head around it like you can't you can't pretend about that you gotta you gotta go yeah there are risks there are there are things to do but then you couple that with educating on the fact that the the point of that is decentralization the point of that is 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 a sort of freedom that comes with being in the crypto space and I think then the other thing to address is, is that some people still view crypto as a scam or, or something dubious that people are doing to, to rip other people off. So I think the long term is really like educating and lowering barriers of imposition. The more you can make people feel welcome, the more you can make it clear how this thing works in a simple way, um, the more it will propagate. 
And then this is this is kind of the two ends of the mimetic spectrum between um, Olympus and uh, Alchemist, is that you can either go the the complex route is that people stick around through the difficulty of acquired knowledge and then are incentivized by the, the surface layer mean. And this is sort of where we've got the there is no plan approach in terms of in get people curious about what we're doing. So they actually ask the question and, and are engaged to learn. And then Olympus has got a, a massive lowering of barrier of imposition is, is, is that people tend to feel comfortable here quite quickly because of all the people in the space and, and how they approach it. But yeah, I feel like I'm talking a little bit widely, so maybe again, coming back to one of your questions or another thought. Church, I wanted to um, just ask one more thing and get your thoughts. Someone the other day was saying, oh, but, um, oh, you've got Ohm. And I was like, yeah, and it's sort of got these assets backing it. Some of them are like Ethereum and sort of Sushi, which is this trading uh, token. And then they said, but, you know, well, how is it sort of better than money? And I was like, well, your dollars aren't backed by anything. So <laughs> um, that's, it's a kind of very difficult argument for you to say that sort of your Australian dollars are better than my own. Um, and that's, and that's kind of growing as well. And then I said, the, a good way to think about it would be like, if your sort of US dollars was backed by sort of corporate stock, like if it, was backed by 0.01 Amazon share. Do you think that's a, a, a sort of idea that can take hold or do you think that's kind of going to be very difficult for people to adopt like a sort of this sort of currency backed by other protocols shares in their um, useful services that they provide? This is, yeah, I think this is where we're going to see again, a shift in relation to currency and we've got, instead of just i have money in in currency it's worth x it's more i have assets in particular currency i can do x with it and i think we'll see people becoming attracted to profiles of what they can do with their money in various senses so this includes you know nft art gamification uh governance it's 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 again why why does anyone have money so you can have influence, buy things, do stuff, trade on value and, and, and so on. In some cases, I might want to stack up like crazy on a governance token, not because I think it's going to go up in value, but I'm interested in the creation of a specific project and I like the community and want to be involved in its governance. So I think it really is going to be a process of people recasting and reassessing their relationship to money and what they want to do with it. And people recognizing maybe slowly over time that, that having just one currency is is kind of limiting you know that you you think years back of, of that person that has multiple passports and you know is familiar with trading their money from aud into to an exchange and going traveling and, and, and help, so having all that additional knowledge that comes with operating with several just nation state or global currencies um i think the same is true of crypto is you don't learn nearly as well something than the skin of the game you get from dropping two three k into a project and then going wait crap okay i gotta actually really learn about this as soon as you start using metamask and so on you really learn these things because you have that skin in the game so i feel like we're going to see people shift from a relationship of just oh i have money it's worth x but i have money y that i do this with i have money c that i do do this with and in terms of like Having Australian dollars, it may be, yeah, if I want to go to the corner store, Australian dollars may for a long time still be really useful. But if I want to generate money, having own that I then convert to Australian dollars to live my life might be really useful. So I think it's more about people's relationship with money rather than just a dollar figure. It's not just making money, it's, it's how do I use it. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you see as the kind of differences between, uh, I know you touched on it, the sort of, um, different mimetic sort of ideas behind each community, um, the sort of alchemists not having a plan. But can you tell us a bit about sort of what cultural events kind of happen over in alchemists? Are they like similar? I know you guys have like sort of a radio station that's run alchemist radio. Tell yeah, us I mean, we've got, 
We've got AMAs, we've got radio events, um, we've got calls with our team, we've got community brainstorms, we've got gaming. Um, we're spooling up a lot more events as we go along and, and as our community finds its alignment with, with what it wants to be doing. A lot of it is we, we open it up to, to people to suggest what they want to do. Um, another, I think, really strong cultural element is, is sort of one of our sub-projects that's not surfaced as a as an actual project but the chaos lab is a um, process where we we have a little voting system set up for uh individuals to apply become part of a coordinate and then actually assign regular value to just community members that isn't it's not something that's navigated by the core team or or any of the seniors or or anything it's it's just as the name would belie um in chaos is 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 people are allowed to come in suggest and and form their own little structures around ideas that might emerge so part of our cultural event is is continually moving away from having any barrier of imposition or control over a particular role or particular idea you know i might be leading on the marketing front but it's it, it's often very open for other people to suggest what we should be doing in the marketing as much as i might have more marketing experience it's also going well let's let's try things let's let's figure things out over time so i think the just to sort of surmise and add to that is the the main cultural differences between Olympus and, and um, Alchemist is, is is in terms of how we gain our mimetic stick over time. Uh, Alchemist, with there is no plan, and someone leaves this huge open mental scape for someone to explore. It it, it incentivizes sort of cryptic curiosity in that because we're posing an inherent mystery about what we're doing, people are incentivized that if the engaging with us at all they're generally particularly active because they want to know what's going on and they've sort of got to spend this extra time gaining cognitive skin in the game by learning what alchemist is doing because we're a distributed ecosystem and so much is happening on uh, so much is happening once and so much is going on um it's actually a little hard to to convey and digest alchemist all at once so that um that sense of something so much bigger than um i think draws a lot of people in and then Olympus has strengths in the sense of that it doesn't, I feel like understanding all the economics does, does require a bit more cognitive fluency with crypto and what's going on. But there's this, just this ease of use with Olympus in terms of, again, you just buy the token, you stake it, and then you're making income that you can take off the top. And I think to a lot of people that appeals at a, at a middle layer where there's a wide number of people that are probably fresh into crypto or familiar with crypto and even even might have thought being familiar with crypto that own was too good to be true, but it enables a, oh, wow, this is easy. I'm comfortable with this. So you've sort of got ease of use and strength of community spectrum with strength of community. Again, I, I think that one's cool. We've got to have strong, positive communities, but then we're, we're sticking on the, the skin in the game that people acquire by getting into the space. I mean, minting a crucible uh, used to be something that could only be done through the back end at the very start. So the first few crucible holders were, you know, individuals who had a lot of knowledge about the space and or had taken the time to figure it out. So it's been this almost constant process of riddle and curiosity to, to build up our community. And I think that's where we sort of differ from Olympus and I in terms of our mimetic profiles. Very cool. Um, maybe we can just round out with talking about sort of DAOs and working in the space. Um, so Olympus has maybe, I don't know, this month it must be over 100 contributors because last month there was 80 and we, <laughs> even just our tiny sort of project, Agora, has like an extra five people. Um, do you think just scaling sort of, where do you think the upper bounds of working in sort of for a project uh how and and maybe you can tell us a bit more about how alchemist coordinates their dow and also like do you, we were talking a bit about this uh with dude and asfi um they were having a conversation about it on the agora spaces which is a sort of twitter spaces sort of hangout um and they were talking about the sort of lower friction between uh regulars and DAOs and people in DAOs want to be there and they want to sort of contribute whereas people in a regular workforce they might hate their job so it creates a lot of friction yeah I mean uh do my, do my guys in the audience do we want to maybe bring him up and continue part of that discussion there 
Let's invite him up. He's got to invite. Come on, do my part. <laughs> wink, wink, winky ear gang represent, my friend. Maybe, yeah. Is this the dot dot dots? What's this profile picture you got? Yes. Yeah, it is, is the, the dot dot dots. Dot dot dots. Dot dot awesome. dot dots. Yes, we 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 are the 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 winky the winky ear gang. And the winky ear gang. Girth Girth has one similar. What's up, guys? <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get called out here. Hey, everybody. I've been waiting to call you out, dude, my guy. It's just, <laughs> just opportune moment for conversation. I'm always going to put you in the so. Like, I feel like I'm a little out of place up here with three Australians. <laughs> I'm outnumbered. <laughs> we actually no, put none on of us know now. each other. Put on, put on, maybe, on so. maybe I'll just blend in. Yeah, yeah blend in, mate. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's adorable. Um, Church, maybe oh, I you can... Blend. Maybe you could tell us about a little bit about um, Mist, and then Dude can kind of uh, come back in and sort yeah, of I'll, say I'll, I'll, how I'll our DAO is different. Or what, what yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's good. Yeah. Um, so, so Alchemist is 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 uh, we've recently released the the Alchemist Fractal, and, and part of our approach to it is is structured tiers and and and, and sub layers in a sense is allowing people to self select into roles over time and, and emerge. Which I think touches on your point there of sort of, you know, most people who stick around and want to be there, so in a in a DAO or or crypto context, a lot of the time is if you if you're sticking around in the role, it's not a matter of contract; it's a matter of passion. It's a matter of something that it, it is what you want to do. Some pipe, some people might be chasing it for the money that, that that comes with these things, but typically DAO work is is a lot more hours than people. Uh, kind of expect and it's it sort of ends up consuming your life in various aspects so it's it's generally very much so that people who are here are having a high level of passion if they're stepping into a role and i think it's the opportunity to actually like get in and build and develop things and and, and be a part of something bigger than oneself that's that's what you have an opportunity with in the game governance and, and being in in a DAO is is your mimetically and, and financially aligned with with the success of the company in a way that you might not be in a, a regular context and a regular context is you know if i want to uh, have shares in the company i either need to be a, a in a high enough role in the company or, or spend my own resources acquiring the the company stock and then even then is there's no real direct relation between my holding of the stock and my capacity to have input in the company unless if i'm a significant equity holder that that has a vote so as much as we've tried to do this in the past it's it's crypto governance seems to allow for much clearer voting mechanisms is because there's no there's no barrier to it there's no inability for someone to pipe up and go hey you know my voice is as strong as anyone else's very cool um did did you maybe some most people maybe didn't didn't have uh the sort of background about what you were saying about the dow kind of in the Twitter spaces the other day um, about sort of wanting to be there and the lack of friction and how that can make it such a more efficient process. Yeah. What 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 specifically would you like me to touch on? Or maybe in just regard reiterate to that? Just... sort of what you were saying um, and you gave some examples about kind of uh, people in their roles and not wanting to be there. Um. Yeah, well, I'm bad at quoting myself from history because <laughs> um, I kind of just say shit and then don't file it. Um, but I mean, y yeah, working. I think I think the thing that DAOs, the one of the major advantages of DAOs, I think, is that um, they really are like the. I mean, they might not be the absolute like final evolution of a meritocracy, but they're the closest like thing we've ever actually gotten to one i think and so i think that like talent really does kind of find its way into the right places in a dao and i think that yeah it's just what i was talking about specifically had even more to do with like the virtual kind of pseudonymous world that dao's mostly exist in in that there's none of the, like when we're just here as voices over, you know, discord, there, there's so much less social stigma, um, like physical social stigma is such a strong and powerful thing, whether 
gender or skin color or like size of human or like color of hair or you know facial features weight i mean smell all of these things that in the real world we we even if we're not thinking about it we're reacting to it physically ourselves and and here it's we really remove that and i think in the work environment that improves efficiency so much because you know first of all it's going to cause way less discrimination and I think that it also just makes people feel more comfortable in in my opinion. That's, that's kind of my perspective is that it, people feel yeah. more comfortable interacting and, and being themselves and just kind of, uh, you know, doing, doing what they do and then they get recognized because they're being themselves. Uh, just, just charming in on that, that aspect though is, 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 I think I'm actually a prime use case of that is I, I'm an entrepreneur outside crypto and, and have my own mushroom business and, and, and a few other things, but uh, the last several years is, is is a lot of it is is not liking anything that wasn't freelance work or having any particular job for a lot of those reasons is rocking up to a specific location at a specific time with specific people in a context where people are reading off off those biases is just is is a nightmare for me as as a, a fairly sensitive and aware person to all the mimetic propagation and stuff we're talking it's really hard for me to be in a, a corporate space and then just sort of absorbing that mental ethos from it. So uh, coming into the DAO space, yeah, of like being able to overactivate as an individual and do much more work that I, than I would do in any other context and be happy for it. This is sort of what I was talking about passion before is, is, is not the money, is, is that people actually really like the work when you give them the runway to do so. It's just people also like to work in a way where they feel like they're having impact and that they're, they're doing, doing things that matter. So by being able to go, hey, yeah, I can jump on a Discord and, and be at home and, and work at pace, it's sort of there's no, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I was always a guy who's like, I'd, I'd, I'd want to work 10 hours, not eight. Rather than two eight-hour shifts, I'd rather have like a longer day and just get more work done and that sort of stuff. And I can dictate that in an asynchronous sense with a DAO. I can't do that in most work contexts. I mean, I'd been... I'd been remote work for about five years before the pandemic already. I'd already switched to remote working. But even in that context, it wasn't, wasn't enough because it's still that one-to-one -one interaction with, you know, you're a freelancer, you've got a client, or you're working with an organization, you've got multiple clients. And there's always this, you have to do process X, Y way. You have to do this, this, this is the way we do things. And as a problem solver, a lot of the time it'd be like, but there's a better way to do things. And in uh, fixed sort of business contexts, people don't want to change those things. In a DAO, you can just make the argument. You can say, hey, you know, it'd be cheaper to do it this way, or it'd save us time to do it this way. And people actually pick up on that because it's a, a community decision and, and, and observing what's coming through strongly rather than, oh, you know, do my guy's the CEO. So I'm going to listen to what do my guy says. And I'm going to fire back at do my guy, in my opinion, and we're going to talk about it. And that might be a little bit slower for discussion layers, but then it's, much, much faster for an overall throughput layer as organizations. The strength of DAOs then becomes lateralization is that you can have so many different things going on at once that eventually in most DAOs, it should get to a point where no centralized body can actually keep up with everything that's going on. Yeah, I think we're kind of getting getting to that level at the moment um, in Olympus. Like I like see all these channels and I'm like, I just have no... I, just, I can't even commit the time to like try and read what's going on in the like design channel or whatever because there's so much stuff. But I think this is sort of uh, coming back to what Apollo was talking about, sort of emergent talent um, and, that, and that the DAO sort of does that because people are doing what they want to be doing and they sort of self-select into sort of roles that they want to sort of participate in. And then it just makes this sort of super efficient uh, working group that's able to deliver a product like Olympus Pro, which was sort of just an idea five weeks ago. And then the DAO built it all, including like all the interfaces, all the marketing, everything in sort of five weeks. And then thinking, well, if they can do that in five weeks and sort of the DAO is this size, if it gets bigger, how, how much else can it sort of deliver and like what what the possibilities are and um yeah i at least um in terms of the value that's that's kind of what i am starting to see as sort of the dow as this sort of 
um, extra value on top of the risk-free value, like there is potential to deliver all these products. Is that sort of the emergent talent? Does that sort of, you see that in Alchemist as well, sort of people self-selecting into these roles and a sort of more efficient. 100% is, is same thing with the no plan is, is, is chaos requires a certain amount of fluency to navigate. So there's a strong selection pressure for if you're able to, to navigate that chaos and, 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 and see what's going on before you and, and engage with it, then you're going to, to do a lot better. So it selects people who are actually really passionate about understanding things and, and really bring strong skill sets to the table. It's in pretty much no instances have I seen someone in any DAO, Alchemist, Olympus or otherwise, put their hand up and say, hey, I can really do this, and then it's not been the case that they can do it. There's been a few people who will come out with grand ideas and, and, and thoughts about, you know, oh, we can do all these things, but you can now typically tell between the people who are going to activate and execute on things and have a, a strong grip of it and those that don't. And it's becoming a stronger selection pressure in DAOs is, you know, how do we vet new people and engage with people who are actually going to do action? And in non, nine out of 10 cases is, is people show you first as they rock up and start doing work. So you know that they're, they're good. And I think that comes back to do my guy's point of like not having so many barriers of like racism or or sexism or bias in a workplace because there's no mode to discrimination other than your work so it becomes work focused the selection mechanism is to be can, can you do good work and that provides an opportunity for a, a lot of people to self-select in positions where they are passionate about and that they have the best eyes for because as you're doing everything someone's generally going to come along as, with a new set of eyes and say oh but what about this and then you can typically go well if you're the one that's seeing that you can you can actually take some ownership of that role. If no one's thought about it already, people can step into being the person that does that thing. Definitely. Is that is that kind of how you see it as well, dude? 100%, yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think, I think uh, we've been on here for like an hour and sort of 45 minutes. Um, if you just had any sort of closing thoughts about sort of uh dows or working together or dude you had anything extra to add you want to but um closing thoughts wise marks is 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 just an observation of of where i'm seeing things in the space in general at the moment here at olympus odyssey uh income shout out to shout out to the income genesis team i see a few of the the income, income team here uh we've got dude uh we've got monk and two of my guys actually part of that team as well as uh, keisha in the audience and and anyone else that I'm not spotting the name, but uh, yeah, Alchemist as well, Alchemist, Odyssey, everything. What I'm observing in the space at the moment is in the last few months, there's been an incredible amount of de development out of everyone. Um, particularly on the Alchemist end, we've we've gone from no products to four or five products and and more on the way. And uh, it's, it's it's been a lot of effort, a lot of work, and uh, in, in some places, a lot of tensions between just everybody's sleeplessness and the ability to maintain the the level of hype that everyone's engaging with and i've seen you know various people in the space here and elsewise get 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 quite tired and sort of not collapse but but start cutting back to the, the to the strengths and weaknesses that really serve them most and i think for down governance um our community and culture and how that starts to evolve in the space it's going to be a really interesting time in the next few months as you know october rolls in we probably see another bull run and as well as having the People are really going to start making the decision of what serves them. As people become more financially free in the space, they, they, they can make the decision of like, what are their actual interests? What are their actual goals? And I think we're going to see another wave of people in DAOs in general, self-activating and really being coming, encouraged to participate in the longevity of spaces. When things are new and early, you know, you get your strongest actors coming in because they can risk and step up to the plate when chaos abounds. But as things settle and, and you know, it's sort of more, appropriate structures emerge you're going to get you're going to get a lot more people coming into these spaces i think and i'm personally really really excited to see that next wave of really positive and accelerated growth at a a more human lateralized level where it's lots of humans working together on mass maybe into dow and and between a lot of these collaborations that may happen between alchemist mm. and olympus and, and and so on is that it's more going to become about people in large spread networks rather than any particular doubt. Uh, any closing thought, 